Coming up here on Sports World from San Vassar, Italy, WBA lightweight champion Ray Boom Boom Mancini against the British lightweight champion George Feeney. But right now, let's get back to... Well, for the, I wanted to fight somewhere where I'd be comfortable, either in Youngstown or someplace else. And certainly Italy is a place where there's a lot of love for me, and uh, I was very happy with the opportunity to fight here, and uh, this is why we've cho chose San Vicente. Boxing is like walking a high wire. If you don't have 100% concentration, it can be a disaster. Do you have 100% concentration? I guess what I'm asking is, is your head into boxing? Well, for the again, I have to say absolutely, or else I wouldn't attempt uh, getting back into the ring again. Uh, naturally, I had to consider all things and think about it very strongly, but right now, I feel I am 100% sure this is what I want to do. I will come back with the same strength and aggressiveness, and I'm ready to fight. Your strong religious conviction and faith in the help of Father Tim O'Neill helped you through the difficult weeks and months following the Kim tragedy. Even here in San Vicente, you went to a thousand-year-old church to Mass last Sunday. What are you looking for in religion? What does it do for you? Well, for the, first of all, i got to thank the Lord for, for the strength and the power to face and overcome uh, tragedies in my life. Naturally, uh, the Lord's help. It's an Italian homecoming for Ray Boom Boom Mancini, the all-American boy with a pinch of mozzarella, going against British lightweight champion San Vincent, Italy, in the Aosta Valley, in the Alps, and we're getting set for WBA lightweight champion Ray Boom Boom Mancini and the British lightweight champion George Feeney. Ray Mancini has just made his entrance to the ring, and this in effect is a homecoming for the Mancini family, his mother and father, uh, Len and Ellen Mancini, arriving this morning, along with 50 people from Youngstown, Ohio. Tomorrow, Ray will join them to a tour of Milan, Rome, and Florence for the next week. Ray's grandfather, born and raised in Bagheria, province in Sicily, and 150 people from the Sicily area, including the mayor of the town, journeyed here to watch the fight. They arrived after a 16-hour bus ride. We'll be back with the bout, but right now, let's return to the Capitol Center, Dick Enberg. Mancini, the 21-year-old out of Youngstown, Ohio, with a record of 25 and 1, 20 by knockout, his only loss October of 1981, stopped in the 14th round by Alexis Arguello, his last bout, that tragic 14-round knockout of Duke Koo Kim last November in Las Vegas. Going up against George Feeney out of Harperpool, England. That's located some 300 miles from London. He'll be 26 next week. Record of 16 and 7 with seven knockouts. He has won six of his last seven five by knockout. And his last fight, October the 12th, won the British lightweight title, stopping Ray Katus in the 14th round. He had only two fights in 1982. The other an eight-round decision over veteran Ken Buchanan. Now, prior to the Buchanan fight, Feeney was knocked out in the sixth round by David Andell. That was back in October of 81. In fact, before the win over Katoos to take the British title, Feeney considered as a really a competent fighter, a man who would always provide a good bout but would not win the big ones. And Ferdy Feeney feels that Mancini suits his style and that uh, Ray keeps coming at you. He is impressed with Mancini's strength, but for some reason he feels the pressure tactics of Mancini are made to order for him. I'm wondering if he's uh, being a bit on the overconfident side. Well, I think that the tail of the tape is meaningless here, and what you're saying is he really doesn't understand what a full body attack by a hard body puncher like Mancini means. When you look at the bodies, the body shape on Mancini is a solid muscular body, whereas Feeney looks at, like the thin, wiry type. He has uh, no musculature around his uh, uh, body. He, as a matter of fact, he looks like he, they just released him from the black hole of Calcutta. Yeah. Very small ring, 16 feet, made to order for Mancini. Absolutely a phone booth. I think Mancini said, I can hit him when he gets off the stool, just about. It is so small. This is scheduled for 10. It's a non-title bout for Ray Mancini. The scoring on the 10-point must system handled by the three judges, Ennio Colombo. Adolfo Leone, Bieso Magnietti. The referee is Rolando Matavecchi. 
And Badovici bringing the two together. Three knockdown rule in effect. There is a standing eight in effect here in Italy. And it counts as a uh, knockdown. Three knockdowns stop the fight. And if they give him a standing eight, it's just like uh, a knockdown. Also an odd thing is if they're driven through the ropes and fall out, they got only 10 seconds to get back in. And Cini in the green. And Feeney in the yellow. We're underway. Round one. Falling through the ropes may be a factor. These are only three strands of ropes, not four, as in the States, and they're loose. Either fighter could fall out, has only 10 seconds to get back. And there was dissatisfaction on the part of Mancini's manager, Dave Wolf. Felt the canvas was too soft in the middle. That was corrected. And felt the canvas too hard, which could cause a problem if a fighter is uh, hit down or slips down and hits his head. There's very little padding to this. It's almost canvas over boards. And uh, as such, he's right. Uh, it's too hard. Well, Feeney's supposed to be a slow starter. He's living up to his expectations. Boom Boom, as we know, starts fast and just keeps going like that for 10 rounds. So far, the much vaunted body attack that Boom Boom said he was going to put in is missing. He's been headhunting. Past the one minute point. Round one scheduled for 10. Feeling out process by both Mancini and Feeney. Left hand by Mancini did clip Feeney. Because of the length of the basketball game that preceded Sports World, there is a question as to whether we will be able to uh, fit in the Roberto Duran Pepino Cuevas bout that took place last week. In Los Angeles, that would depend on the length of this fight. Boom Boom beginning with that thudding body attack. For the first time in his first round, he's put in three or four very solid body punches. Feeney back with two jabs and snap back to hit a Boom Boom. Feeney two inches taller than Matt City, as you saw the tail of the tape, does have a slight reach advantage, about two inches. I think the difference in body physique is evident when you see both fighters close together. Feeney very thin and wiry as type from Northeast England is, and as Ray Clark, the head of the British Boxing Board of Control, says, very hard man. Good right hand by Mancini, followed up by the left. British contingent seem to feel that if Feeney's going to get hurt, it's going to be with a body attack because he's got a very strong chin. And we're coming up. On 15 seconds remaining in this opening round. Crowd reacting every time Boom Boom Mancini lands. And we're final seconds. Round one. Round two. Marv Albert with the fight. Dr. Ferdy Pacheco from San Bonsa, Italy. Ray Bobo Mancini in the green and George Feeney out of Hartlepool, England. In the yellow, the Ray Mancini story well known. Out of Youngstown, Ohio, his dad, Lenny Boom Boom Mancini, a ranked lightweight fighter in the early 40s. Then went into the Army, was wounded in World War II. So Ray's dad never did get a title opportunity. Ray vowing he would get the title. His dad never got a shot at. Turned pro in 79, won his first 20 bouts last May, won the title in dramatic style by stopping Arturo Frias in the first round. Second round is open, all Mancini as the first one closed only with a much stronger punches. In the corner, Mancini, the manager of George Feeney, said that's as good as he's going to get. He's not going to get any better. And uh, that season for a woeful surprise if he thinks the first round is as good as Boom Boom's going to get. Ironically, Denny Mancini, no relation to Ray, although he claims he is a distant relation, is the manager of George Feeney. And Feeney landed the right hand. And again. That's the only chance Feeney's got. Feeney's got to fight back. Although Feeney's record is that he doesn't fight for the first five rounds, and then he comes on hard. Oh, left hand by Mancini. Mancini's catching him flush with some of his better shots now. And it has.
has begun to heat up in this second round. Fight Doctor scorecard had slight edge for Mancini in round one. Getting that left hook in. Mancini's teeing off, but I must say, doesn't seem to have any effect on Vinny. Right on the chin. And the chat is for Ray Mancini. Contingent from Youngstown, Ohio. And also from Bagheria and Sicily, rooting for Boom Boom. And that will do it for the second round. Ray Mancini's dad and Bob, Lynn and Ellen, along with some 50 people from Youngstown, Ohio, as we move on to round three. Normally a very quiet crowd takes in boxing events uh, in Europe, but because of the interest uh, in Ray Mancini, we have had spurts of enthusiasm here at the Arizona uh, Dallas Sport. Mancini has neglected the body, has continued to be head hunting. And Mancini, the manager of Feeney, has said, get in this fight, boy, go one, two, three. You're not fighting him back. But that is Feeney's advertised style. He just doesn't come on in the beginning rounds. by Mancini. <laughs> and it gone by round three scheduled for 10. This is a non-title fight. Mancini, while busy, doesn't seem to have the fire and the uh, steam that he's had in the earlier bouts that we've seen. He is sort of taking his time. He hasn't got that whirlwind activity that he's got. There was a good hook by Mancini. doesn't even seem to blink when he gets hit right on the jaw. Right hand by Mancini that landed. Mancini having his way as far as points are concerned. And we're under a minute left of this third round. We are live from San Vincent, Italy. It is 10.22 here in Italy. And Bobo Mancini continues to have his way against the British lightweight champion, George Feeney. He's landing clear shots now, those combinations. Getting the right hand in, but Mancini able to answer. Right hand by Feeney did not have much on it. He's being outspeeded, Miles. What's happening is Mancini's coming on very fast. Idiot. Come out to round four. George Feeney was just told in his corner, come on, get involved. The more you get involved in this fight, the better shot you have to win. And it's good advice because as long as he stands back, Boom Boom's beating a tattoo on him. Down and over and out. He's just hitting him every which way. Scoring on the 10-point must system. What does the uh, fight doctor uh, scorecard look like? It's a complete blowout so far for Boom Boom, 30 to 27. Feeney has not taken a round. And neither has Feeney uh, been hurt for all the uh, punching that's uh, occurred. Nothing's happened to him. 
Lenny and Ellen Mancini watching their son Ray. Making the journey from Youngstown, Ohio. Mancini clipping after he got uh, hit by the right hand of Feeney. Feeney's been hitting him with right hands. He just doesn't put a lot of power into that right hand, almost tentative. I think if he ever discovers that he can land that at will, he's going to start throwing with a lot of power. And it would then dissuade uh, Boom Boom from being so reckless as he comes in. He's totally open coming in. George Feeney, a soccer player in his youth. Played for his hometown team, the Hartlepool Rovers. Army reservist, made seven parachute jumps. Married with the four children, all girls. And Feeney's boxing heroes, two Americans, Willie Pep and Rocky Marciano. Well, he's not boxing like Willie Pep, but he's taking punishment like Marciano. He's certainly open to everything that Boom Boom is throwing. Gets hit by Feeney. Not good punches from Feeney. They were they were there, but they were they were arm punches. Nothing hard behind. Them. And less than a minute left in this fourth round. Feeney again connecting with the right hand. That right hand's been there all night for him, and it's a straight right and a lead right. Boo Boo should not be getting hit by that, but he is. Starting to work the body more toward the end of every round. He seems to remember that he's got to go back down to the body and he does his homework for a while and goes back up to head and hoodie. So we come to the close of an uneventful uh, fourth round. We'll be back in a moment. This is round five back in San Jose, Italy. Marv Albert with the fight, Dr. Ferdy Pacheco. We are live on NBC Sports World, WBA lightweight champion Ray Boom Boom Mancini in the green against the British lightweight champion George Feeney in the yellow. It has been Boom Boom's bout to this point, although he has not shown the fire that we've seen in the past. Well, his manager, David Wolf, Ooh. told me he needed some good work, but I think they've sent him out to do or die now because he's a much different fighter now. This is the old Boom Boom with a fire right now. I think they needed the work to, to establish Boom Boom back in a fighting trim, but he seems to be a lot more excited right now at the beginning of the fifth round. Feeney, for his part, is exactly the same. He has not changed a bit. Difficult to measure as you look at uh, Ray Mancini coming into this fight. Of course, uh, we're still early in the bout, but several questions on my mind. Is he perhaps taking Feeney too lightly? Perhaps the family pressure is had to entertain a lot of folks uh, the last couple of days, uh, both from Sicily and from Youngstown, Ohio, or perhaps the pressure of coming off the Duke Koo Kim tragedy. Tough to tell. I think it's probably more the fact that they wanted him to get the work, and so far the first four rounds were just a workout. It wasn't uh, Boom Boom on an aggressive assault and attack to put the guy out. Now look at that jab. Look at the difference between Boom Boom's jab. Now that's hard. That's going in there with great force. Past the halfway mark. Round five. San Fosan at the Palazzetto Dello Sport Arena. In a standing room only here. I'd like to point out again that because of the length of the basketball game preceding uh, Sports World, 
we were hoping to show you the Roberto Duran Pepino Cuevas foul that took place last week in Los Angeles. Oh, good combination by Feeney that caught Mancini. So the Duran Cuevas foul still up in the air. We're not sure if we will be able to show it today. Yes, that is. So a good rally by Feeney here in this fifth round. Off the flurry that he threw at Ray Mancini in round five. This is round six for scheduled for ten. Well, let's see if uh, George Feeney comes out of the box like they said. After round five, he begins to really fight. He begins to get into it. He's beginning to swell. Mancini's left eye uh, has cut man applied to end swell the uh, cold iron compress to his left eye, and it does begin to look like he's, it's swelling. Uh, Feeney has been hammered, yet he is unmarked. George Feeney, known as a, a man who would always provide a good fight to some that is called an opponent. Oh, what a right hand bounced off Feeney's jaw, and he didn't blink. He Feeney. is indeed a hard man. Feeney's record is not on the spectacular side, 16 and 7, 7 knockouts. Feeney known as one who would absorb much punishment early in that rally. But Mancini was not sharp in the early rounds, although Feeney has looked better the last couple of rounds. So Feeney has not had to absorb that much punishment thus far tonight. Next Sunday on NBC Sports World, more live boxing. Frank, the animal Fletcher, going up against Wilfred Scipion for the USBA middleweight title. That'll be from Atlantic City. And then the World Pro Figure Skating Championship continues. That's next Sunday on NBC Sports World. left in round six. I keep wondering why Boom Boom abandoned the body attack that was well advertised and uh, was supposed to double over uh, Feeney. Every once in a while he goes to the body. It's rich territory, but then he goes back up to the head, head hunting. He certainly has had a lot of luck to the head, but it doesn't seem to move Feeney. Boom Boom winning every round decisively, but uh, Feeney standing here for his patented finish. Combination by Mancini, and that hurt Feeney. Referee Rolando Badovecchi breaking the fighters as we conclude round six. On to round seven, George Feeney, the British lightweight champion. His brother John is the British bantamweight champion out of Hartlepool, England. Literally hanging in against the WBA lightweight champ, Ray Mancini. As Carter seems to think this is his four rounds, he said, now we're going into the final four. These are yours. I don't know what kind of faulty arithmetic they got. That would leave him six and four, and he'd still lose the fight. He certainly can't think he won any round up to here. George Feeney won the British lightweight title by stopping Ray Katus in an all out brawl, round 14, back October the 12th. A good right hand that lands with a great back comes Mancini with combinations. You got to feel that Feeney had something with that right hand. It would really shock Boom Boom. He lands it, but he doesn't seem to have any authority behind it. There's no force to it. So far, none of the uh, fears of uh, David Wolf have been uh, realized. Neither, neither man has fought off the ropes. Good combination by Mancini, and he rocked Feeney. 
hardness of the ring is uh, surface has not made any difference and neither has the slackness of the rope. So we're fortunate both men have been in the middle of the ring and both men have been trading. And Cini's manager David Wolf uh, with the complaints before the bout. Another example of the uh, inconsistent standards in the world of boxing. Oh, good left hand by Feeney. That's another one. You just get the feeling of Feeney would just put them together. And, uh, he punches one, two, three, and then just moves away. And it's he doesn't have the consistency of uh, Boom Boom Mancini. Maybe that's why Boom Boom is the world champion. And Feeney is just the champion of England. Little dribble of blood now coming from that swollen left eye of uh, Boom Boom Mancini. There have not been uh, meeting heads, there have not been many uh, clinches. Ray Mancini well in front on the scorecard. It's not been an impressive bout to this point. That is it for round seven. Oh, and coming out of his uh, corner, George Feeney waiting at the uh, center of the ring. This is round eight. Now he was slow in coming because they're working on the cut. Cut is small, but it is dribbling blood down the side of Mancini's face. Ray Mancini comes in with a record of 25 and one. 120 by knockout. His only defeat, October 1981, stopped in the 14th round by Alexis Arguello. And Mancini landing, got the left hand in. Often we see it that these thin, wiry type fighters have a great deal of stamina and resistance. And as we mentioned earlier, Mancini showing he can hit and also be hit, which has been his style. I don't think he's been hit that much this round, uh, this uh, fight, because Feeney has not thrown it. When he does throw, he does hit. But he's just been curiously inactive because possibly he's been smothered by the activity of Boo Boo Mancini. Good combination by Feeney. Past the halfway mark, round eight, and a good round by Feeney. He rocked Mancini. Here's Mancini holding on. Mancini's holding on. By Feeney got in. That was the big punch of that flurry. Feeney not seeming to realize his advantage has gone back to his curiously inactive style. And right now, people who have doubted Ray Mancini are pointing at George Feeney and saying, Look at this. The blood flowing down the left side of the face of Ray Mancini. Strange fight. Uh, Ray is now cut. It's a good size cut. And he's beginning to get hammered by Feeney. It's almost exactly as we have been told that Feeney takes an awful lot of punishment and then comes on in the late rounds. A solid eighth round for the British lightweight champion, George Feeney. We'll be right back. Lucy has him in the corner of George Feeney. Ray Mancini coming out quickly. A good eighth round for Feeney. He had Mancini in trouble. In fact, he rocked him with the left hand. This is round nine from San Jose, Italy. Marv Albert with the fight. Dr. Ferdy Pacheco. We're live on NBC Sports World. And uh, while we have it unofficially ahead, Boom Boom, remember, these are three Italian judges. They go by boxing in a completely different way. They go by outpointing, counterpunching, 
So it will be unique to see what their scoring is. Scoring on the 10 point must system. Referee does not take part in the scoring. The judges, Edio Colombo, Adolfo Leone, and Piazzo Macchiari. And again, the crowd responding as Mancini has come on. I think Mr. Mancini has discovered that Feeney can be dangerous and he wants to get him out of there. It's as if he's been playing. It's enough now. Let's get him out. Play and Alan Mancini, the parents of Ray, who got clipped again by the left hand of Feeney. Two shots by Feeney. Backs up and look, he's holding on. Mancini's holding on. Again, that right hand has been landing all night long. Ray getting hit more and more. And not much steam on the punches of Ray Mancini. Well, if ever we've been touted about a fighter and they've been right, it's been Feeney. The English writers all said it's going to be nothing the first five rounds, but those last five rounds, Feeney will just not quit. And we're under a minute left in round nine. We are scheduled for 10. Ray Mancini. Known to take a good shot has taken a few of these last couple of rounds. In terms of slipping punches still in the learning process. Defense the question mark in the style of uh, Ray Mancini. Well, Mancini's style has always been that his offense covers all sins. He doesn't uh, fight on defense. He's been able to get away with it thus far, except when he met a gentleman named Alexis Arguello. Mancini catching Feeney with the right hand. And then catching a couple from Feeney. So we will go to a tenth and final round. Full England. He'll be 26 years old next week. Reckon 16 and 7, 7 by knockout, and has pulled a surprise to this point. And the corner of Ray Bupo Mancini, 21 years old, out of Youngstown, Ohio, record of 25 and 1. Tenth and final round, Mancini well in front on the Fight Doctor scorecard, scoring on the 10 point must. But Mancini has had a difficult time with Feeney. Feeney's been nar narrowing that big edge and bulge that uh, Mancini had. I now have an 88 to 85. It's difficult to see how uh, even European judges could give it to Feeney, but Feeney is making it a fight in the last three or four rounds. He has managed to open a cut and semi close Mancini's left eye. And he is backing up Mancini. It's odd to see Mancini retreating in front of uh, John Feeney, but uh, George Feeney, but Feeney is standing right there. And a minute gone by in this tenth and final round. He is a hard man from a hard country. Northeast England produces some tough, hard people. Proud chanting for Ray Mancini. I would have to say that Mancini is just not impressive in this fight. There's no fire there. Well, the questions raised earlier, has he taken Feeney too lightly? Perhaps uh, all the outside interference taking its toll here in San Vassant with uh, Mancini doing quite a bit of entertaining with family and friends, or perhaps all the pressure, all the, uh, the questions concerning Mancini's last bout Against Duke Koo Kim. 
Well, unquestionably, he needed this fight before he got into the title fight. Oh, he just got hammered by two shots by Feeney. Just when Feeney was taking punishment, back he comes with two punches. And we're final minute of the bout. George Feeney coming on very strong from round six on. How many times have we seen in boxing over the last 20, 30, 30 years seconds. that a champion comes over, takes an Englishman lightly, and finds out he's in a life and death struggle? I remember Randy Turpin and Sugar Ray Robinson. What a surprise. Oh, and Feeney is reeling and seeing that Feeney in trouble. As we come to the final seconds, so 10, Mancini 9, 8, 7, 5. Five, four, three, two, one. It's all over. Back in San Basa, Italy, we're getting set for the decision. You saw the beautiful sportsmanship of Ray Mancini at the final bell as he mouthed to George Feeney right at the bell. Beautiful fight, he said to Feeney. But Ray Mancini had a difficult time with the British lightweight champion. We're set for the decision. Let's go up to the ring announcer. Apparently a delay in collecting the uh, scorecard. We await the decision from the three judges on the 10 point must. Judges uh, Inio Colombo, uh, Dalfo Leone, Piezo Magnieri. The fight doctor scorecard had it for uh, Ray Mancini with Finney closing the gap over the final rounds. They are attempting to clear the ring. And the referee, uh, Rolando Badovecchi, will bring the two uh, boxers together. All right, let's go to the ring. So it is a unanimous decision for Ray Hugo Mancini. We hope to pick up uh, the scoring, but right now, right. let's go to the fight, Doctor. Mancini. Yeah. Bernie Pacheco in the ring. Over and, here. Uh, looking the to uh, out-wrestle the photographers. Okay, over here. All right, let's go. Turn around the other way. Let's the go to the ring. The other way. Here. We're, we're looking. All right. Tough, tough fight with uh, Feeney. You didn't expect it that tough. Yes, I did, Ferdy. I mean, again, if you read, I said we want a good, tough fight back. I don't want nothing, uh, no easy fight. You can't when you're champion. You need a tough fight to come back on. All right. Uh, and, you, didn't, uh, you didn't go to the body right off the bat when it looked like you should have. What happened with the body? The head looked too inviting? Well, my jab. I, hey, Rudy, I'm not a boxer, right? But I had a good jab tonight. Uh, I did, you know, like I said, it's going back. Every fight's a learning process. I jabbed real well today. I didn't go to the body as well. Um, Do you think that you lack the fire that you've had in title fights? a little fights? slow. I, I think... Not to say, no, I mean, we trained very, very hard. Last couple of days, I was a little sluggish. No, excuse, no, it was a good, tough fight. He banged me good. Um, you know, I was in good shape. They carried me through the you fight. You needed the 10 rounds, the 10 hard rounds. I don't know if I needed them, but we got them. You certainly didn't need the eighth round. He looked like he rocked you in the eighth round. He hit me with a good shot. He hit me with a good shot. He, uh, he stung me. Uh, but uh, as credit to my condition, I come right back. We fired right back. All right, so the main punchline we're looking for is Boom Boom Mancini's back. You felt like you needed a hard fight, and you think you're ready yeah, for championship action. One. Yes, I am. I'm ready to get back into it. I, I worked real hard, and uh, I'm very, I, I show I got the heart and the head still, and uh, I feel very good about the win. All right, with Boom Boom Mancini, after a hard workout in San Vicente, we go back to Marv Albert and the relative peace and quiet of ringside. All right, Ferdy. I thought Ray had the key word that uh, he has felt sluggish, and it was a sluggish fight for Ray Mancini. The scoring 
Two of the judges had it 98-96. One had it 98-95. So it's Man City by decision. We'll be right back. Back to one of the most neutral sites of all time, Anchorage, Alaska. Our Tim Ryan is there today. And uh, Tim, I got to tell you, we got more snow here in Manhattan than you got up there in Anchorage today. Brent, this is the first network telecast of any kind from Anchorage, Alaska, so kind of a 